our tale of Odyssey starts with a nymph, a king, and the aftermath of war at Troy. It's a decade since Odysseus left for his home, Ithaca, after the Trojan War. For seven years, he's been ensnared by the nymph Calypso, but he's pining for his wife Penelope and son Telemachus. The goddess Athena is rather a fan of Odysseus. She persuades her father Zeus to compel Calypso to free him. He's been gone 20 years, feared dead, and Penelope's fending off 108 suitors. She says she'll marry one when she finishes her weaving. Sneaky. Telemachus searches for news, but meanwhile, a higher power plots his father's downfall. The sea god Poseidon really dislikes Odysseus. Well, he did blind his Cyclops' son. On a Mediterranean cruise, that's unfortunate. And Odysseus is left stranded once more. But Odysseus entrances his hosts, the Phaeacians, with tales of his odyssey and his many escapes. From, among others, the Cyclops, Polyphemus, the sorceress, Circe, the Sirens, the supernatural Scylla, and the whirlpool of Charybdis. His reward for this stirring story? Oh. But Odysseus needs to stay incognito. Ever helpful, Athena turns him into a beggar. And reunited with his son, they celebrate by agreeing Penelope's suitors must die. The fair Penelope arranges a competition. She'll marry whoever can string Odysseus's huge bow. The suitors lose more than the contest. Odysseus is home, and Ithaca's his again. Athena celebrates, Poseidon doesn't. The suitors' families are angry too, but they'll get over it with Athena's help. Odysseus is in the clear and ready for life with Penelope. Or another adventure. <laughs>